Karen from Karen Davis Sugarcraft. I'm going to show you how to model this little baby here. Um, now he's free, he's modeled freehand, but it's a very simple figure to make, nice and easy for beginners. I have cheated a little bit and used our face mold and the teddy, little teddy there from the baby and teddy mold. So um, I'm going to show you how to do the girl, the girl version of this. Okay, so we we'll pop that down there. I've actually covered a cake, another cake here, in pretty pink, ready for the little girl to sit on, okay? Now, when I make these figures, I put a support through, a satay stick through the, through the um, figure to hold it while it dries, but I don't put any glue on it so it doesn't stick. I only put the glue on the parts of the body to stick together. So what you can do when it's dry is actually lift it off, take the stick out, and then attach the figure to your cake with royal icing or softened sugar paste, you know, um, just to keep it secure. But it's just nice to know when you give it to somebody, there's no non-edible item in the cake. So on this one, I'm going to put the stick in here and use that for the support for our little baby girl. Okay, now I've got the sizes, I've got a pair of scales and I can tell you the sizes of the pieces of paste that I use. So if you've got a pen and paper handy, or pause the video, go and get a pen and paper. I can tell you that the body weighs 75 grams, okay? So we take the piece of paste. This is my own sugar paste, but you can use any sugar paste for the modeling or some people like to use half sugar paste, half flour paste as a modeling paste, or just add Tylo CMC to your paste. So I'm gonna keep the creases under here. And now when I put that in my hands, I'm going to roll like that, put your hands like a book and roll so you get a teardrop shape and then just brush those little creases underneath the body, okay? And now that's sideways on. So here's the tummy at the front. This is the baby's back, this is the tummy. So keep the back nice, flat and straight and just give the baby a little bit of a rounded tummy, okay? It's sort of a pear shape. Now that is ready to go onto the stick on the cake. So I never just push it straight onto the stick. I push the stick into the figure, into the body. And as I push it in, I twist a little bit. I just don't shove it in because you might distort or misshape the figure. And what you can do underneath to make sure it doesn't stick to your cake, just put a little bit of icing sugar or corn flour under there. So when you come to take that off, you know it will come off quite easily. Okay, I'm just going to oops, push that forward a little bit. So I know that the uh, the head won't be too far forward. I'll just pull that back, there we go. So now it's the legs, I'm going to make the baby's legs. Okay, I want to just make sure I've got a facing the front. This is our center front here. So the baby's legs now are 11 grams each. So let's weigh the paste and check. Yeah, 11 grams, 11 grams. So for the legs, Put the paste on your fingers and start to knead, push it into the centre like this, okay? So you're making that nice and smooth. Now roll it into a ball. <clears throat> and then again, make sure those creases are gonna be out the way, smooth as way as much as you can. And then think about where they're going to go if it's a leg. So if I start to roll a sausage or carrot shape, making it slightly narrower towards the foot, then while it's in your hand, roll your little finger across and you'll see you start to get a little foot shape coming. So now flatten the foot, bend it forwards and pinch the heel at the back. Now that makes the ankle a little bit fat, so thin it a little bit there. And then you can just flatten the sides in a little bit. You see that's the front of the leg. So I've pinched it in at the sides where it's going to join against the body. So put that down and then hopefully make the other one to match. <clears throat> so again, knead the paste into the center, make it smooth, roll a ball. When you're modeling, if your hands are hot and you're making the paste very dry, you can actually put a little bit of Trex onto your hands and that will give you longer to work with the paste. So now we just make our sausage or carrot shape then roll with your little finger, roll it up the leg, 
and pinch and bend the foot forward. So you're pinching it flat, pinch the heel, roll the ankle. And then oh, there's a little crease showing there. Just pinch that in a bit and check it looks the same as the other leg. Yep, pretty much the same. So I've got some edible glue here. And just make sure you only put it onto the body. Don't let it touch the cake because remember, you know, if you want to take this stick out later, you don't want any glue touching the cake. So we put one leg on. And you see when I've put it on there, I'm just, I've just bent it up slightly where the knee is. And then we put the other leg on the other side. And bend up at the knee, push the foot in. Oops, did I put glue that side? I can't remember. <laughs> I think it is there. I think I went a bit off centre. There we go. Okay, and now you can really push in at the side to make sure they're both attached well. Push the feet up again. Then I'm going to take a Dresden tool and push up behind that leg. Knee, sorry, and that knee. So there you can do one or two little creases in there and then I've got a stitch wheel at the other end of the Dresden tool and I just go straight up the center like that okay now we're going to put some buttons onto the baby onto the body so this is our button mold and I'm going to use this tiny little button here put some corn flour in I always use corn flour I think it's the easiest way to use a mold and again, this is our sugar paste or fondant, which is already strengthened, so it will work in the moulds. Um, if, you know, some people say to put them in the freezer to get them out, you don't need to. This will just come out. Whoops. <laughs> the difference with this, because this is so tiny, this is such a little tiny piece of paste, there's no weight in it. So when, I, when you see me do the head later, you'll see that the paste will just drop out because of the weight in it. So this now, it's, you can see it's not stuck, it will come out, but it just needs that little flick, that little bit of help to uh, take it out of the mould. So there's two, we'll have three buttons, I think. So a little bit more corn flour, tiny piece of paste. I mean, the other way, instead of patting your corn flour on there is use up any on the table and then put it in. That one's slightly big. So I'll just take that off at the edge. And then out it comes. They always land the wrong way up. <laughs> oh, turn over, that's it. I'll just push it back. Okay, so I'm going to put a little tiny bit of glue on here. Let's go for the middle. And then here and here. You could be very um, careful and measure and do it very accurately, but um, I'm just sort of guessing. Oops, so I just take it over on the knife and then slide off. Now I didn't check, I can turn those a little bit. It'd be nice if the um, little dots in the middle of the button were straight. It's a bit better, I think. And then the bottom button. Okay, there we go. So she's got three little buttons there. Okay, now I'm going to do the teddy bear. So this is the baby and teddy mould. So again, we're going to dust it with corn flour. Tap out so there's not too much. And I've coloured some paste in grey. This time for the teddy bear. I thought we'd give her a grey bear. So make it nice and smooth. Now, if you haven't got our sugar paste, marzipan works really well, or you can use any sugar paste or fondant with Tylo CMC powder added to it. I'm bending that mold back so I can see it goes quite deep into the feet and I've pinched the paste out a little bit there to make sure it goes in. Okay, now the other sugar paste, you need to add a five mil teaspoon to 225 grams or eight ounces of paste you just knead it in and it will mature you know over a few hours so 
um, it will change slightly and probably be easier to use. Okay, so that's ready to come out. I'm just going to rub there. That little piece there will separate his legs. So that's ready to come out now. It's quite a stiff, quite a deep mould this. You see how thick it is, how deep. So it's not as easy to bend as some of the others. But what I do is just turn it over, push, and again, a little flick will get his feet out from the bottom there. So there you've got your little bear. Okay, so we're going to put some colour on him now. It's easier to colour him now before, um, before we attach him to the baby. So I'm just going to pull over some powder colours ready to dust and paint him. So I want a little bit of pink. Now be careful when you use powder colours, you hardly use any. This is such a tiny piece. Just dab the colour into the lid and then rub it on kitchen paper to make sure there's no loose powder. Now put some pink into his ears and then onto his cheeks. Now you can either put it onto his snout here or onto his face. I'm going to put it onto his face. A little bit there as well. Okay. Now he needs to be painted. Oh, what I'll do first of all, I'm just to make sure there's no not much powder on there and I can take off the excess corn flour. When it's such a tiny piece like that, you do tend to use a little bit more corn flour to make sure it comes out okay. Um, now we want um, some, I've got alcohol here, but I could just paint with water for this. I usually only use the alcohol when I want it to dry quicker. Uh, like when I'm doing the eyes, when you see the eyes on the baby later. That's very difficult to see. I know it's so tiny and small and I'm just going to dot into his eyes with the black. And it's probably best not to fill the whole eye. It will make it probably look too big. So it's quite nice to just have a tiny little dot in the eye there. I'll lift that up so it's at a better angle for you to see. Now what you can do with this is, because the baby's going to hold this bear, you can actually cut under his arm so it rests over the baby's arm. So that's what I do. I just lift that, do both if you want to. Just round off the edges where you've cut and I'm going to leave him for a second while I make the baby's arms and hands. Okay. Master program. For the baby's skin, for the hands and the face, I'm going to use marzipan. I like marzipan, I think it colours really well for skin, um, but you can use sugar paste, fondant, um, the same and get the same effect. Now, this is a peach and pink mixed together, okay, for that skin colour. And because there's so many different colours and shades of skin, I always start with this colour and then if you add brown to it, you can get whatever shade you want, okay? Whatever depth of colour you want. Okay, so I'm going to use this one today. So the baby's hands, everybody worries, don't they, about doing hands? 
but let's get just get two small balls of paste. Now that one looks slightly smaller maybe. You can't really weigh these on the scales over there. I don't think they would even register as, a, as a anything, you know, one gram or whatever. But I think that looks about the right size, about a pea sort of size. Okay. Now this is a, a good one if you do want to put a little bit of Trex on your hands to stop it drying out. It's a, a really good one. It gives you more time to uh, to play and get the hands right. What I do is just start to roll a teardrop shape. Okay. Keep a nice point at the top. Then flatten slightly. Not completely. Okay. You just see there. And the same with this one. Roll a smooth ball. Roll the top and point. Then flatten slightly. And let's see there, they look about the same size and shape. Now, first I'm going to cut the thumb. So what you're going to do is cut a triangle out, but the position is crucial, really. Um, you've got to go to the side and straight up like that, and then take an angle. So it's a very thin triangle you remove. Okay, now you see there, you've got a nice point there. Get rid of that, round that off. And the thumb as well, flatten that tip and shape it. So you've got a little mitten shape. Now don't go any further, do the other one. Do your baby's right hand. Okay. So you always remember, go to the opposite side now, cut the thumb on the opposite side. So you don't end up, if you do end up with two right hands or <laughs> just turn it over, you know, if you end up with that, turn it over. It happens, these, these things happen. So now, these, these are very, very simple hands. It is a little cartoon sort of character baby, so don't worry too much about, you know, great detail. I take a Dresden tool and I mark halfway and press for the fingers. And the same there, and the same that side. Then turn your tool round and push in at the top and you see the way it shapes the ends of the fingers. Then make sure the thumb's out the way and just then press them in gently. And you've got a nice little hand, push the thumb back down. Got a nice little hand there, okay? So I'll do that again on this one. You just press in, it's not the, right the way through. It's just to mark the fingers and then push down at the top edge there. Move the thumb out the way, press them together, bring down. And there's the second hand. All right. Okay. Now sleeves or arms. Now I'll weigh this again. This was, I think it's about 14 grams for both of the arms together. I roll the arms in one piece. So one more. That'll do. Okay. So for the arms, Make the paste nice and smooth as, you, as before. And then roll into a ball. Roll a long sausage. Okay, and then that is going to be cut in half. Just make sure it's even right along. A good way to do an even sausage is with a smoother if it's a bigger piece or whatever. So I'm going to cut that in half. Okay. Now it's going to bend for the elbow. And you remember with the foot, I said, if you, do, if you don't pinch the heel at the back, it's the same with an elbow. You see the way it just starts to flop. So if you bend that way and just pinch gently, that will hold its shape so much better. And like the leg before, there's the, the front of the arm, you know, up here, the front of the arm. So pinch in slightly thinner at the top there, okay? And then you make a little hole with your Dresden tool, like that, ready for the hand. Um, I'll mark those creases on actually when it's on the figure because I might press them out of shape. And then this arm's the same, so we're thinking there's the right arm, now we do the left. So we just bend slightly, pinch at the back, flatten at the shoulder, and then make a little hole in here. Okay, and then we want some glue, some edible glue. I'm going to bring this cake back over with the baby on. 
now so you can see the arms go on. Um, where's the glue? There we are. The edible glue. Remember, one part Tylo powder to 30 parts water. So try not to have the brush too wet. You don't want a lot of glue in here. Tiny little bit. And the same in this arm or sleeve. Tiny little bit of glue. And then I'm going to brush glue on the body. So it's down here. Oh, first things first. Actually, the baby must go on. Uh, the teddy must go on to the baby. So teddy bear is going to stand here. And it's very convenient because it just rests on the baby's leg. <laughs> you see there? Okay. Just might push, push it slightly forward so the arm will fit. And then I'm going to put some glue at the side of the body and across the teddy bear's tummy. Then glue down here for this arm. And I'll probably rest this hand on the baby's leg, but I'll see where it sort of falls before I put any glue on. Okay, so we take one arm, put the hand in, push the hand in, and think about the, the sleeve being on the body to make sure the hand goes in, in the right position. When it's in, just roll gently to secure that little hand, okay? And then bring it over. I'll just turn the cake a little bit. So the arm will go on here, lift up the teddy bear's arm and press that into place. Now, she will need some glue just underneath her hand as well. So now she's holding the bear. OK. And the same with this arm. Put the hand in. Think about where the back and front of the hand is. Put it onto the body. Now I'm just going to turn that round because it's awkward for me to see what's happening. Yeah, I think I might just rest it at the front actually instead of on the leg. She must have shorter arms than the boy. <laughs> okay, press that on gently. And then I'm going to take the Dresden tool and just mark little creases there at the elbow and run the stitch wheel up and up and turn and do the other one so we want some creases at the elbow and then the stitches up and up okay now because she's a girl we want a nice little pretty collar on here but be careful now remember no glue on the stick i'm just going to put some glue at the top of her sleeves there and then we'll give her a pink collar so we've got a little piece of paste and just put some cornflour onto the table and onto the paste and then roll out nice and thin and then i've got a circle cutter Cut out that collar and then what else I need to do is cut out a little section about a quarter okay about a quarter there and now I'm going to frill the edge of the collar give her a frilly collar this is a um, gem tool number 12 I think you can get these from PME now you roll the edge like this. Make sure there's cornflour or icing sugar on your worktop so the paste doesn't stick. And people seem to think the thicker the paste is, the better the frill. That is just isn't right. You want it nice and thin so the tool doesn't sink into it too deep and then rip. Okay, so you've got a nice little frilly collar there. And then if you want to, you can run the stitch wheel just around that edge as well. It's all the little details that make a difference, isn't it? With these sort of things. Okay, now because of the stick being there, I think it would be better if I just put a little cut as well. Like that. So it will go sort of across like that. There we are. Okay, and there's a little collar on there. Let me. Oh, it's not quite straight, is it? Let's just turn it a little bit. 
That's better. I might even lift Teddy forward because he's lost his ear underneath that. Okay, push him back. See him better now. He's not hiding. And I think that would look nice as well with a little tiny bow at her neck just to finish it off. So I've got this little bow mould here. Um, now, I'm, I don't know which size to do because I'm going to put a bow in her hair anyway. So I'll probably, I'll use that one and then you keep the tiny one for the baby's hair later. So we go cornflower into the mould. Now for any of the bows, whichever size you're doing, even if it's the really big one, you put a little sausage of paste across the top there. And then when you push that flat, that excess paste will go down into the tails. Okay. And that's ready to come out now. So we just bend the mould. Oh, see? <laughs> right before when I said the buttons were so small, they don't really fall out because the, there's no, whoops, no weight in them. Um, because this is a little bit bigger, it just fell out. Okay, so let me put some glue across the baby's neck. Just there, avoiding the stick, of course. And put the little pink bow just on there. And again, I'm going to lift the teddy forward. So the bow goes behind. Okay. There we are. So she's nearly, nearly done, isn't she? Oh, I know I didn't do. We need some stitches. I think it looks nice with stitches just to finish off. Just around the uh, edge, the hem of the sleeve. Okay. So there we are. There's the... The almost complete um, figure and I'm going to show you now how I do the head using our head mold I think with faces this you know it looks great so far but what people worry about doing heads it makes or breaks the figure what <laughs> you know what you when you make these things so I'll show you now how to use the head mold it is a very very simple looking mold lots of people call it the baby face mold because they think that's what it is but these faces can be turned into any age they can be an old man old woman to a young little baby and you've got the five different sizes we do do another size the medium face which is a bit bigger again um but you can do these these heads either flat at the back if they're going flat on top of a cake or the side of a cake or you can do what I'm going to show you now the whole head the rounded head shape okay so like I said earlier I'm, I'm going to use marzipan because I do like marzipan for skin so first thing you do if you don't know what size you put a piece of paste in and you can see there that is too big okay so you just want to get the size for the head, really. So you just put it in roughly because you've got to think, you know, you're going to see the, the shape of the baby's head. So I think that will be about right. OK, so I'll start to knead it and get it nice and smooth now. I think because marzipan has got oil in it, it gives a better, just a better appearance for the skin. So like I said before, the colour... I start with peach and pink 
and then add a little brown you know as little or as much as you want to get any shade of skin so we just start to roll that nice and smooth the warmth of your hands should get that quite smooth quite quickly quite easily yeah there you go now if i put that into the mold and press i'm going to lose that nice smooth shape so there's a little tiny nose there and i do want that nose when like i was saying before if it's a if a different figure a different character like an old man an old man wouldn't have a tiny little dainty nose like that He'd have a bigger nose so i wouldn't worry about doing this step now because i would be adding my own nose afterwards so all i'm doing is just pinching a little bit to get a point onto the paste okay i'll put that sideways on now so you can see okay and then you can put some corn flour into the mold but you don't really need it i don't think with marzipan i think with the oil it just it releases really well so now that point has got to go into the hole for his nose so aim for that let the mold release the mold and then put it in now the shape of a head it's not a round ball it's fuller at the top and it tapers down towards the neck now this sounds a bit daft but babies don't have necks <laughs> if you do if you do put a neck on your baby it looks really really odd in fact I'll, I'll show you i'll put a neck on the figure so when i take the head out later and put it on you you'll see that it just doesn't look right with a neck it, they sort of look giraffe like I'm only just going to put a little piece of paste there just to pretend it's a neck. If you were doing the neck, you would push the paste from here down into that neck and then trim it off there. So all you do is make sure the paste isn't going over the edge because you will because the baby isn't going to have much hair. You would have a ridge that you would see. OK, but you do want the ears. So if you push like that and down, so it's sideways, then down into the ear. And the same this side sideways and down into the ear okay that's ready to come out now so i haven't had to press hard and spread the paste and end up with a ridge round that will have imprinted the eyes and the mouth so you see how loose it is when i turn that over it will just drop out there we go okay so at that point um, you can change if that was going to be an older face, for example, you can mark. I'm not going to because this <laughs> the baby shouldn't have any wrinkles or lines. You, you would emboss, see, with your Dresden tool here. You can if press if the nose has come out, you can press it in, put a bigger nose on either a ball, an oval, a, you know, long triangle, whatever sort of shape nose you want. Um, you can use like this tool here I call it the mouth tool or smiley tool you, you know and put like chubby cheeks here you can put double chins on you can put lines on the forehead so you see you can do so much to them now that poor child has got very sticky out ears so let's push the ears back ready if you can see any line anywhere you can just rub it with your fingers just to smooth that off okay so that's ready now to color to dust and color so I'll just bring back in the powder colours for the face. So the first thing I want to do is some cheeks. So again, just very light with the colour. You dip the brush in the colour, tap it off into the lid, rub it onto the paper so there's no loose powder. And you see there, I'm just building up the colour very, very slowly because it's better to build it up gradually than to put too much on and not be able to take it off. You don't want the poor baby to look like it's teething. Okay, there we are. So just a delicate little blush. Now I'm going to paint in the whites of the eyes. Now I always use alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, rejuvenator spirit, paint aid solution. There's lots of different names for it. I've got some white powder colour. <clears throat> it paints really well, this, when it's mixed with the powder colours and it dries very quickly. I want it to dry quickly because then I want to paint on the eye colour and the pupil as well. So the eyes are sticking out, so it's nice and easy to see where you paint them, okay? Some little bits of 
powder there that haven't dissolved. So just take those off. Mm, that'll do, that's okay. Let me just turn it around to check. Yeah, I just want to put a little bit further underneath there. So they both look the same in that way. And you see, it's great to be able to do the faces like this because if you look at my hands, they're resting on the table. I'm even, the hand I'm painting with, I'm even holding steady with my left hand, you know, to help keep it still. And you can turn the head to make it easy for yourself as well. If that was already on the figure or whatever, you, you couldn't paint it as easily as well. Okay. And I always say, if you've got shaky hands when you paint, you need some chocolate. <laughs> I don't know where, it seems to work for me, but so give it a go. Now, now, painting in the eye colour, what uh, what I want to do, you always, the general rule when you, you paint in eyes is to paint them looking left or right, up or down. Because if you don't, when you if you paint them straight in the middle, just looking straight out, they look, I think they look like they've had a fright or a shock. <laughs> and we don't want that. Oh, no, so I'm going to do brown eyes. Let's see, let's get some brown. And again, the alcohol. Now we see how quick they dried. If they look a bit blotchy, you could go over them. Now, I've forgotten. It's funny when I like with the white brushes, the white handle brushes I keep for white, but because I'm talking away, I've forgotten and put it in the brown. <laughs> it's just great to have brushes that are purely for white colours. Uh, now, I want this would be nice if she's looking at her teddy bear. So let's think about that. So she would be looking down this way, wouldn't she? That colour's a little bit thin, it's just ran slightly there, but not too much. So, we just paint that one in as well. I think that one looks slightly darker, so I'll just go over this one a bit more. Okay, and then I will wash that brush, ready for the white in a bit, in a little while. And now paint the black, the pupil. And there's enough, you see, I've painted that many times. There's enough powder in there. Mixing the colour in the lid means that you can reuse it over and over again. If you put it into a paint palette, you're washing it and washing it away. So I just get a little bit more powder there. I don't want it runny like earlier. So then the pupil goes over here, looking down at Teddy Bear. And that one, oops, let's get a bit more on the brush. Ooh, paint them nice and big. That's another thing as well. When you do a, especially a baby's face, paint the pupils, the eyes big, nice and big and bright. It just looks a bit odd if you'd paint a baby's face. They've got tiny little eyes. Now, when I want to do eyelashes, I don't use the alcohol because I'm using such a thin, fine brush. Um, the, the alcohol dries too quickly. So by the time you paint, it's literally, you know, you mix the colour, take it over to the face to paint and it's dried already on your brush. So use water this time. Now turn the head so it makes it easy for yourself. The eye is sticking out, so your brush will rest against the eye and then flick out, okay? Let's sort of explain how I do it. So go round and out like that. And then the other eye, I can turn the head now. I know this, yeah, you can't see it actually. I was gonna say it might be tricky for you to see, but so if I go that way and then flick out again you only need two or three eyelashes don't try to do too many okay now i'm going to do little eyebrows sometimes i forget the eyebrows i don't know why <laughs> sometimes i look at them and i think that baby doesn't look right and i've usually forgotten to paint in the eyebrows so you can check it i'll check it on the back of your hand to make sure it's not too dark or too deep and you just need little tiny brows babies don't have big eyebrows anyway generally as a rule Okay, and then finally, to finish off, you put a little dot of white into each eye. If you look into anybody's eyes, there's always a little twinkle, little dot of white, a reflection of light. 
just need a little bit more powder there and then just tiny dot of white I mean some people do a little dash or they'll do two dots of white I know what I've forgotten I haven't done her eyelashes underneath it just needs a little line I think to finish off underneath her eye so let's do that one and that one if you're feeling brave you can do some eyelashes but again like I say only two or three you don't need a lot okay so move that out of the way and all this out of the way now because that's all the colours finished with just make sure my hands are clean when you, you it's always the way isn't it when you use powder colors and then you forget and go to pick something up that's black or brown on your hands it's really really annoying now i'm it's time to put her head onto here but i'm not just going to pick it up and squash it onto that stick let's move it over this way a little bit what i want to do like i did with the body is make a hole through the head so it's easy to put onto that stick but the other thing that's nice, you might have noticed on the, uh, the boy cake, is to put it on at an angle. Rather than it being just straight on, if you tilt it a little bit, so she's looking at, you know, even looking even more at the teddy bear, it looks really nice. So we take the stick, the satay stick, and you see you're not going to go that way. You just turn it slightly, not, not a great deal, and then just push it in and twist. I don't want to go right the way through. Now, I'm not going to put any glue on yet because if I put that onto here, hang on, I need to just turn it so I can see what I'm doing. I think that sticks slightly wider than that one. You see what I mean about the neck? I mean, that is a bit of an exaggeration, but they just don't look right if you put a neck on them. Okay, so we'll take that off, take the neck away, and then very careful again with the glue. I don't want any glue touching the stick. So just round the edge. And pop that on. I just need to turn it so I can see. There we go. There she is, looking at the teddy bear. So again, I mean, you can even turn her head, have it a different, you know, different way again. Okay, so next is her hair. We need some hair for the baby. Let's get some nice paste. So I've got a nice dark brown here. And a cocktail stick. Now we'll just get some glue. You can instead, if you want to pipe royal icing on, you can do. But I'm just putting some glue on her head there. I only want it very thin, so I'll just thin that off a little bit with my finger, actually. Um, yeah, I'd, yeah, you can use royal icing if you want to. I quite often use a 42 nozzle which is like a very fine rope. This is marzipan again, coloured dark brown, okay? So if I take a tiny ball of paste, roll it in my hand like this. The boys was actually done, if I, if I just bring the boy over for you to see. The boy's hair, I did like this, and then you just fold it over, pick it up. I'm very sticky, actually. I should have washed my hands. You pick it up like that, take it over, put it on. Okay, but the girl now, I want to do some curls. I'm going to try and do some curls for her hair. So again, very small paste. Roll it very, very thin. And then you can twist it round the cocktail stick a little bit to get some curls. Now I'm just going to do that again. I think the paste, because I've done it twice, the paste was very warm and soft. So if I just do that again, like that. Yeah, my hands are very hot, which doesn't really help. That's what I wanted to do. You see, just twist it round the cocktail stick like that. Okay. And then take it off. Take it over and attach. It's not going to stick up probably as much as the little boys did. If you want it to stick up really, it need, the pieces of paste need to be quite small, quite short, because it's longer, it's flopping over. So I'll try a shorter one this time. So just a little roll like that onto my finger. 
roll around the cocktail stick. Oops. <laughs> like a wriggly worm. Oh dear. Yeah, I'm too hot to do this, I think. Try it again. And twist round. No, it just breaks. That'll do. I've got one anyway. And just take it. <laughs> it's not going right today. Pick it up with the stick. Pop it on. There is a bit of a curl there. Okay. Now, I'm going to put a bow on there. So you can always put the bow on and then attach these to the back of the bow as well. So let's try another one of these. Last one. Okay, and then finally to finish her off, a little bow, pink bow for her hair. So let's go for this one here. Down into the tails like before. A little bit more pace needed. And then turn it over, flick that out. And then we'll just put that onto her head. Just there. And then they can be pushed up. I could put some more on, put some more on later. Okay, and then finally her dummy, a little dummy in her mouth. Just put some glue just here on her mouth. Okay. And then we've got some pink paste. I'm just gonna put some cornflour on my sticky hands. I just take a little ball of paste, flatten it, attach it over her mouth. Take a cocktail stick, put a little hole in the middle and twist that like that to make the hole bigger. Then take a little tiny piece of paste for the handle Roll it nice and thin, bring the two ends together like that and press very gently. Put a cocktail stick over it, rest it on your finger, just touch it with the glue. Now I need to just need to turn around, you'll see this going on sideways. Take it over and push it in. This is very awkward from the angle I'm at and push the little dummy handle in there. I just need to, I think that's the hardest one I've ever done because of the angle I'm at to do it. So there we go, I think that will stay. There we are. So that's our baby finished. Okay, a few little problems there with my hot hands and my hair, but uh, I'll just explain what's on the cakes quickly for you. There's the knit here, our knitted piece, our chunky knit on this one. You see the two different sizes of knit pattern. Our bow mould again, this is our Elizabeth lace and on the boys I've just used the button mould as well. So thank you so much for watching, uh, there'll be plenty more videos from me on Cake Flicks TV. Thank you, bye.